Well, hello. Welcome back to Public Domain Movie Night. Tonight we have the Flesher. I'm, I'm going to go with that pronunciation. Flesher Superman animated serials from uh, starting in 1941. They actually ran from uh, September of 1941 all the way until July of 1943. Uh, the first nine episodes were by the uh, Flesher Company, Flesher Studios, and then it switched over hands to the Famous Studios for episodes 10 through 17. We're going to be actually watching 1 through 8 tonight. Um, so then next week when we do Public Domain Movie Night, it's going to be one episode, episode 9, left from the Flesher Studios, and, and then the episodes 10 through 17 from Famous Studios. So, without further ado, here we go with episode number one, The Mad Scientist. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman. To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Well, listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrophanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. No, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois... Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission?
caught her for the... looks like a job for Superman.
congratulations, Lois. That was a great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Empowered with X-ray vision, possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. What are you doing here? Oh, just getting the woman's angle on this story. The mechanical monster! Look out! this in.
yes. I'll give you the details later, Chief. All right, Lois. Let... Lois! This is a job for Superman. this is going to make. The jewels. What have you done with the jewels? You'll read about it in tomorrow's paper. Are you going to tell me what happened to those jewels? and she's doomed.
That's a wonderful story, Lois. Thanks, Clark. But I owe it all to Superman. Well, that's episodes one and two. Uh, that, like I was saying in chat, the uh, second episode, The Mechanical Monsters, was the only one that I remember seeing the entire one. Might have seen bits and pieces of the other ones, but um, that's the one that I remember seeing as a kid uh, probably 25 plus years ago. Uh, and probably on uh, cable at my grandfather's house. Uh, and uh, that's the one that, you know, really holds nostalgic memories for me. Um the voice of Superman was uh, Bud Collier, who was also the um, voice of Superman on the radio, the Adventures of Superman uh, radio series. And his co-host, Joan Alexander, was the vo voice of uh, Lois Lane on both this animated series and the radio program as well. Uh, so little, little tidbits in there. We're going to be throwing in a few more here and there. Uh, now we're going to take a short break and come back in just a little bit for part three, which is, do, 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 do. Okay, no. I lost it here, the Billion, uh, Billion Dollar Limited is the name of it, and then episode four, The Arctic Giant, both coming out in early 1942. See you back here in just a few seconds. <laughs> than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice, disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. I can't go with you, Lois, but I have another story to cover. Oh, that's all right, Clark. I'll see you in the office.
this looks like a job for Superman. how Superman turns up just when you need him. I didn't even get a chance to thank him. than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the Man of Steel, Superman!
Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Penetrating deep into the frozen wastes of the great Arctic plains, an archaeological expedition searching for prehistoric fossils makes an amazing discovery. A huge monster, as lifelike in appearance as when it roamed the Earth millions of years ago in the Mesozoic Age, is found frozen in the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Constantly handicapped by the hazardous sub-zero elements, the scientists and their band of tireless workers succeed in removing the mammoth creature from the frozen pit. The ice-encased monster is loaded into the hold of a huge freighter equipped with a special refrigeration plant and brought to this country. Here, in a specially constructed wing of the Museum of Natural Science, this awe-inspiring creature is displayed to the public for the first time. say that if the ice were permitted to thaw, there's a possibility the monster might still be alive? Thank you, Professor. Yes, Chief. Lois, there's a new angle on that frozen monster story. Get over to the museum and see what's doing. They've got him in a special refrigerator. Okay, Chief. Oh, Lois, want me to go over there with you? No, thanks. You'd probably faint if you saw the monster. You scare so easily. Maybe she's right, but Superman hasn't fainted yet. And produces the necessary refrigeration. The control board is downstairs. I'll show it. The entire plant is operated from this board. The thermometer must be watched constantly as any rise in temperature might prove dangerous. Boy, what a story. Step lively, please. Use the nearest exit. Please, folks, keep moving. We have to clear this room at once. That's what he thinks. Police headquarters. Hello, Chief. Send the riot squad. We're in trouble. Proceed to fit the men at once. Chief, Lois is in the museum. Better get over there, Kent. Right. This looks like a job for Superman. Lois. Superman. 
man. You'd better get back to your office where you'll be safe. I've got some work to do. Yes, sir. And this the best story in years? Well, cheers. Plenty of courage getting that monster story, Lois. Thanks, but where were you? Me? Oh, I must have fainted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, did we say that uh, this definitely has 1940s values in it and... Uh, yeah, there, there was uh, quite a different uh, style of uh, sexual power struggle back then. <laughs> so, yeah. And in fact, uh, next week, the ones uh, we're getting into, uh, I'm definitely going to have to put a warning on because they could uh, definitely be seen in a bad light, depending on how you look at it. But uh, So in any case, uh, the uh, Flesher series here that we're watching was the actual originator of the uh, phrases faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. They actually changed that, though, uh, in the uh, next, uh, well, what we're looking at next week, when it became Famous Studios, and uh, the uh, final, um, how many is that, eight episodes? They actually changed the phrase to faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a lo locomotive, and able to soar higher than any plane. And uh, there was a couple other uh, lines that were introduced at that time, including faster than a streak of lightning, more powerful than the pounding surf, mightier than a roaring hurricane, and, uh, and then faster than a streak of lightning, more powerful than the pounding surf, mightier than a roaring hurricane so they changed it up a little bit as they were uh, you know trying to uh, find footing maybe um, see what was necessarily going to appeal more to the audience it depends um, but uh, that they were the originator of that uh, uh, phrase that everybody knew so well uh, over the the course of the history of superman so we're going to take a real short 30 second break here and then come back for episode 5, which is The Bulleteers, and episode 6, The Magnetic Telescope, uh, from March and April of 1942. So I'll be back in just a second. <laughs>
faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Lane and Clark Kent. Give me a follow up on this bullet car story. Attention. Attention. The destruction of your police station today was only a small demonstration of our power. Unless your mayor turns over the entire funds of the city treasury, power plants, firehouses, and all municipal buildings will be next. Take heed. This is your last warning. What are the authorities going to do about this, Mr. Mayor? We won't be intimidated by criminal threats. Law and order must and will prevail. <laughs> This looks like a job for Superman.
nice going, Lois. Another great scoop for you. It was easy. Thanks to Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. What do you think of the professor's show now? I still think it's pretty dangerous business. Hope nothing goes wrong. that the safety of the public is of special import to you. Perhaps almost as important to you as my ambitions are to me. But you request that I give up my experiments, experiments which are the combination of 30 years of dreaming and planning is impossible. Tonight, those dreams will become real. The comet of Falcon will be my toy. Under my control, it will be brought to within a mile of us. Then, after a close examination, I'll send it back again into space. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I warn you, Professor, we're prepared to stop you. And I warn you, sir, any interference may prove disastrous. Stop! <laughs> City editor. Look, Chief, the panic's on. The thing's gone haywire. <coughs> Lois, Lois, what happened? Lois.
Are you all right? Yes, for the moment, but it's... Superman, you were wonderful. <laughs> You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, how did you get here? <laughs> Thanks to Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, god damn it, Lois, not again. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, such was what the the lore uh, was super of uh, Superman was built on, you know. Uh, so uh, one more little tidbit of information here: the the switch from Flesher Studios to Famous Studios was actually a reorganization of the same company, and at the time, um, you you probably noticed that so far. The uh, episodes that we've seen were all very sci-fi-ish. Um, you know, we're fighting robots and dinosaurs and, uh, you know, stopping robbers and things like that. And the uh, famous studio's reorganization then uh, marked a, a very specific change in how the people that ran that studio decided to approach that and the uh, later eight cartoons that were made under Famous Studios were then um, more World War II propaganda at, at the time. Um, so uh, next week when we go into those, you're, you're definitely going to see a marked change in how these uh, episodes are uh, presented. So, yeah, we will see exactly how that change occurs. So we've got two more episodes in tonight's uh, show, and that is uh, part seven, or uh, episode seven, which is the electric earthquake, and then episode eight, which is volcano. They came out in uh, May 15th. Yeah, yeah, you'll see that next week, Superman versus Hitler. Uh, May 15th and July 10th, 1942. And uh, that pretty much takes up, us up to the midway point. As I said earlier, we're also going to see uh, next week episode 9, Terror on the Midway, which was the last episode under the Flesher Studios mark. So um, we'll start with that one next week and then, uh, and then finish on with all of the famous Studios episodes, uh, episodes 10 through 17. But uh, we're going to take a short break and then come back for episodes 7 and 8. And, uh, and then a little bit of information as to coming attractions on the EBC channel. 
See you in a bit. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice, disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. I still say Manhattan rightfully belongs to my people. Possibly, but just what do you expect us to do about it? You have a newspaper? Publish the truth. Have the island vacated immediately. It's fantastic. Why, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Maybe modern science will make you think differently. <laughs> I've never heard anything so absurd. You know, from the look in his eyes, I'd almost believe he was in earnest. No, he's just a harmless crank. Miss Lane, you wouldn't want to miss this story, I'm sure. measure.
finish lane, get ready for the greatest story of your career. Get out of here. This looks like a job for Superman. looks just as good as ever. That's right, Claude. Thanks to Superman. than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to soar higher than any plane, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice, disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Claude Kent. On this peaceful island, crowned by the great volcano Mount Mauna Kea, occurred the mightiest eruption that ever shook the earth. 
burying the beautiful city beneath it in molten lava and creating destructive tidal waves that raced around the world. For 300 years, this mighty volcano lay dormant. A new and more beautiful city sprang up at its base. But now, after centuries of inactivity, slight tremors are being felt. At the Bureau of Meteorology, a group of scientists watchfully check delicate instruments to determine the seriousness of this renewed activity. you to send me some real stories. Now here are your steamship tickets and here are your press passes. You'll need these down there. Goodbye, good luck, and for Pete's sake, see if you two can work together for a change. Right, Chief. So long. Say, Lois, do you have my press pass? What makes you think I've got it? Sorry, sir, but you'll have to get one down at headquarters. Thanks. Uh, you go on ahead, Lois, and I'll join you later. Now, what did I do with that? Poor Clark. Too bad he lost his pass. <laughs> indications, we can expect things to start popping at any time. In order to save the city, we've decided to blast the higher rim of the crater, thereby diverting a flow of lava away from the city and into the ocean below. Is the chief in? I'd like to see him about a press pass. He'll be back shortly. Won't you have a seat? Thanks.
How's the story coming, Lois? Oh, fine, Clark. Too bad you weren't in on it. Maybe I would have been if I hadn't lost my past. Oh, that bitch. <laughs> and he finds out that she stole it, too, so... What's he going to do about that? Oh, no, we'll just save for next week. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, one more little tidbit to close out the night. Uh, Bruce Tim, who was one of the main animators on Batman, the animated series in the 90s, was greatly influenced by this Superman series. And you can see, it. like, if you compare the two... There's a lot of similarities in the animation style, especially the buildings, uh, you know, the very uh, gaunt angles and the buildings looking extremely tall because of the angle at which they're shown. Um, a lot of that carried over to Batman the Animated Series because Bruce Tim was a huge fan of this series. So uh, that was one of my favorites growing up, Batman the Animated Series. I uh, want to go back and see that too at some point soon. So, coming attractions on the EBC 2021 channel. I'm sure most of you are already aware of this. Can we raise $10,000 in three hours? That's this coming Sunday, live on location at Fort Huntington Park in downtown Cleveland, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you all either on the channel or in person. Uh plenty of space down there in the park so if you want to pop down and say hi parking is a premium i will tell you that so you might if you are personally coming down you might want to uh, get there early anybody that is joining us um you can message me and we'll try to do some uh finagling with the vehicles to make sure everybody can get down there easy and uh have a good time you're going to be able to have a great view of First Energy Stadium where the Browns play uh, right behind where we are setting up, and uh, it should be a really great time. So can we raise $10,000 in three hours for the National Alliance on Mental Illness? I think we can, with your help. Then, I believe we just settled on October 24th. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do that next. Uh, Superman, episodes 9 through 17 next week. Um, and as I stated, uh, episode 9 is the last that was made by the Flesher Studios. And then it switched over to uh, uh, Famous Studios, and uh, the last eight episodes were a lot more to do with uh, World War II propaganda. Uh, so you'll definitely see the mark change at that point after the first episode next week. And uh, we'll complete the series, all 17 episodes, uh, next week then. And our next episode of Arcade, Nostalgia Memories Podcast, I think we've settled on October 24th. So that's going to be uh, two weeks from yesterday, a week from this Sunday. We will be having our next episode, uh, the audio for arcade season one episode one should be available on podcast um probably i want to say wednesday it will be ready and uploaded and uh that way if you missed uh the live episode or um you're not able to catch the video on demand you can listen to the actual podcast on spotify i know it's there for sure and uh pretty soon wherever podcasts are found so our uh, next episode is likely going to be Sunday, uh, October 24th. Just watch the schedule on my channel. Um, usually, at least within you know four or five days of uh, when it's supposed to be, the schedule will be correct at that point. We are lining up the guests. I don't want to say at this point who the guest will be, um, but uh, we will have that uh, for you shortly. We'll put that. So, damn phone calls. But, you know, <laughs> it's hard to say, man. You know, you could always just, like, you know, glue the uh, uh, receiver, 
down to the base of the phone and then you can't take calls and you you could call maintenance then from your cell phone and be like dude it's broken i don't know what's wrong with it so <laughs> i don't know works a bitch works a bitch all right so that does it for this evening public domain movie night number two in the books uh the first half of the superman serials uh from 1941 to 1943 next week uh we will do episodes 9 through 17 and then um i will tell you for public domain movie nights uh after that we'll have two weeks of nothing but spoopy uh it's going to be uh great fun we're really going to ring in halloween with uh, public domain movie night as well we're even going to have a special episode of public domain movie night that will be outside of the regular monday nights where we show nosferatu from 1922 it's going to be a scream so uh that i think um right now it's looking like that's actually going to be on halloween october 31st but watch the schedule for the changes uh, you can always check back because i do change the schedule periodically to allow for uh, scheduling and you know people coming in and out and whatever else so but uh, like i said usually within four to five days of the actual program the schedule is typically correct so we'll see y'all later thank you very much bye bye